something awesome is gonna happen. Donald's cool stuff. Do good gaming. Okay guys, this is Dahmer's Cool Stuff, and this is Q&A 2014. That's right, I finally decided to shoot, film, and talk for the Q&A, because I don't know what took me so long. We're going to get things started off first with Michael B. the Game Genie. Man's asked two questions. Um, first one, what would be your goal for your YouTube channel? Views... Um, subs, views, or website affiliation. Um, on that one, I would definitely like an affiliation. I would definitely like a lot more subs. My goal this year is to hit a thousand subs. It's very lofty, but I figure in the last few months I almost have gathered 200 subs. So, yeah, I, I think a 1000 by the end of the year would be good and be a nice three-year anniversary gift. If it comes before that, then awesome. <laughs> Basically, affiliations, anything. <laughs> I mean, there's some that I'm not going to obviously go for, um, only because, you know, you keep your ear to the ground and you hear some bad things. But the Game On Network that I'm partnered with um, or affiliated with... Um, I guess. <laughs> um, we're doing some great things on that website as well. So it was kind of cool that Chicken Wings, um, Kevin, if you don't know, um, asked me to be a part of it. So that, that was pretty awesome. And it's, it's a funny story. At, at first, I thought I got rejected because I had submitted um, months ago <laughs> to his uh, email about wanting to be on the website. And, uh, after a while, I was just like, alright, it's just another rejection, no big deal. I, I've been rejected a few times before, um, most notably Pat the NES Punk, <laughs> when his website started, um, picking up speed, I never got a response back, so I, you know, it was just like, alright, well, not my cup, you know, not their cup of tea, no big deal. I'm an acquired taste by a lot of people. But then, uh, Kevin got back to me. Um, a couple of weeks, he's like, yeah, man, I want you on. Um, actually wanted to ask you a while ago when we were on a, a Google, ha Google Hangout together. So, yeah. <laughs> Funny story, and it became pretty cool and pretty clear that he wanted me on, so I took it. The other thing is monetizing the accounts is starting to get a little dangerous. Um, you know, any of the reviews I do, I can't for the most part. Um, which are few and far between, and unless you know it's a comedy review. Um, the Gaming Onio Maniacs and the $15 Challenge stuff, I, I can monetize that all, pretty much all day, every day, if I wanted to. I haven't monetized my videos in quite a long time, um, and that's by choice. Basically, I just want to, you know, I stopped monetizing it, and I didn't even, like, really activate the Google Plus account either. Uh, it doesn't matter, I would have made zero dollars anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. But this year, I'm definitely going to finish my AdSense finally, and hopefully start making some money on this. I'm not talking millions, or even a hundred bucks even. But if it's enough to keep gas in the car, or enough to buy, you know, occasionally new pieces of equipment here and there, which the new job is going to let me do, um, definitely. I'm actually, you know, if you have some advice on a new camera, um, my Playtouch is great. The, uh, yellow one, the Samsung is good for car rides and whatnot, but its problem is that particular camera has an autofocus feature that never shuts off and it always autofocuses. So sometimes the shots look really great, like the outdoor stuff in Sega Box. That was all filmed on the, uh, for the most part, on that yellow camera, except for the uh, ending scene in the woods with the guy that pukes on me. That was filmed with this bad boy, just because I wanted clear fidelity shots and whatnot. And this camera does a little bit better. But I've run the course of what my camera can do. So at the moment, I'm thinking a Canon T3i or something similar. Uh, would like a microphone port as well. Uh, want to hook up a Rode mic to it at least at the bare minimum. So, I want to step up my camera game, and even if it's just a few pennies here and there, the monetization, that can help, because it's a production, not going to lie. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a production. Like, the Sega Box stuff in total, 
for all four episodes, you know, if you count the filming, the scripting, the editing, the... It was about 50, 50 to 80 hours in total. So yeah, there's that. That's my goals for my channel this year. And Michael B. asked another question. What is my favorite cheesy horror movie of all time? There's a movie called Cradle of Fear made by the guys that are in the band called Cradle of Filth. And that is my favorite cheesy horror movie of all time. Uh, Cradle of F Fear is basically a collection of short stories, and they're all cheesy. It's all so bad, too. But it's all done tongue-in-cheek. Like, the band and whoever they had working on it got the gets the joke of what a bad cheesy horror movie should be. So, it, and occasionally with my group of friends that have seen it, you'll hear us occasionally say, lick my stump of lust. That's from Cradle of Fear. So yeah, that's my favorite cheesy horror movie. It took me way longer than I should have realized answering it, but the memory banks are slowing down with the advanced age. I'll just blame the lack of coffee. So thank you, Michael B., for the questions. They were actually pretty good. Kit1711, or 1711, asked, What is the strangest, or strangest movie I have ever seen? Quite simply, Crank 2, High Voltage. That movie is so balls-out ridiculous. It is basically, like, halfway through the movie, as I was watching it, I was like, this is if John Warders had filmed an action movie. It would be Crank 2. Between the sex scene on the horse track as the horses are going on, the, um, the floating head still alive, just to see Jeff Chelios die, the fact that at the end of Crank 1, spoilers, he falls out of an airplane and lands and lives and they take his heart. Yeah, the uh, epileptic and crackhead fight, dance-off, that was amazing because that came out of nowhere. So yeah, if you want to see like what a acid trip of an action movie would be in real life, check out Crank 2, High Voltage. You may unsubscribe to me afterwards, <laughs> but you're going to have a hell of a fucking ride during that two like hour and a half or two hours, or however long that movie is. It's the strangest movie I've ever seen, ever, because it just was totally unexpected. Like, if you look at the first Crank movie, and then look at the second one, something happened. Either the, the team that did it discovered acid, or drugs, or something... <laughs> Yeah, strangest movie I've ever seen. Thank you, Kit, for the question. Dragon Eye TE, or Dragonite, <coughs> ask three of them, do I like Pokemon? Not a big fan. I'm not going to hate on the series, because I, I did play a Diamond and Pearl on the DS when that came out. And I got it. I understood why this Pokemon phenomenon was exploding all around me. Is it a series that I can play a lot? No. Only because it is a massive time suck. And now that I'm getting a little, you know, getting older and older, I can't really dedicate a ton of hours into video games anymore. One of the first things I ever did as, like, a gaming guy, uh, I wrote an article called, uh, on my Facebook page, my personal one, and I called it, um, Sensible Grinding in Gaming. And that was basically based off of me playing Final Fantasy VI and realizing, do I really need to get everything in the game? Do I really need to pluck 80 plus hours into this game? Can I pluck that much time into the game? Or can I just blast right through it ha and beat the game and be satisfied with it? So yeah, the older I'm getting, the less I can play. But the games I play, like that I cling on to, I will play for a long time. I just can't play in lots of spurts. Like Borderlands 2, I'm still playing. Um, I've been playing Sleeping Dogs recently. Um, just finished De the new Devil May Cry. But, those, you know, the Devil May Cry game took me like 13, 14 hours to beat. And that's fine. That was awesome. That was a great action game. But yeah, I don't like... I. It's not that I don't like Pokemon. I just... I, I just can't play the games. What is so great about the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Embracing individuality. Uh, pretty much... When I discovered Rocky Horror, 
I was a 17 or 18 year old goth kid who was living in South Jersey. And if anybody knows South Jersey, mid to late 90s, knows that it was very intolerable to anything other than the hillbillies and the jocks and whatnot. A lot of places are like that too. But feeling like I was, me and my small group were the only ones of us, it really did feel that way. And then I discovered Iraqi Horror and discovered that there was actually a place that accepts everybody unless, you know, you're a horrible human being um, and a pedophile and, you know, we don't take that kind. Fuck you if you're a kid diddler. But, uh, yeah, it's just it was a great experience, a great eye-opening moment for me. And I realized that in there, I kind of knew my place. So 17 years later, and one boss tattoo, <laughs> I realized, yeah, I'm a lifer. And it's just because it, it, it is what it is. It, it's just acceptance of everything. And you asked, am I secretly Robin Williams' son? I look like him. No, I'm not Robin Williams' son. <laughs> uh, I, I guess thank you for saying that I look like him. Was it because I, like, hadn't shaved? <laughs> um, cause I, that was just because I was lazy. I got lazy. I mean, I grew a beard out just to see how it would look. But, like, when I let the hair go, I, I, that was just me being lazy. I, I, sometimes I just don't like shaving. It sucks. And that's part one of the Q&A. If you want to leave a question, leave it down below for part two or part three. This is Dahmer's Cool Stuff, and as always, do good gaming.